This is the Bush Whisperer coming at you from the most beautiful penguin sanctuary, southern tip of Africa, Cape Town. The oldest penguin sanctuary. Diary. Come to talk to you today about diarizing. What is the power of the diary? Why are diaries important? The shaman uses nature as a diary and allows the footprints to be in the sand. The shaman spends time contemplating the ground, observing the prints of the animals that have come past, observing the nature of the self. The diaries are very important. The shaman would also make particular marks in the sand, make particular marks in places where sacred things have happened where particular messages have been shared. They're building little houses. They're so cute, these penguins. And so it's fundamentally important to realize that one needs to pay attention and one needs to keep track. One needs to take stock of what's happening. And so if you look at what a totem is, or a totem pole as they're often called, it's sort of like a diary. And it's it's based around the world axis and they keep their if you can call the word sigils loosely it's basically what they are if you look at it objectively upon this rotating axis or the axis around which they rotate the dance pole in Europe they talk about the maypole and the maypole is related to this world axis this is quite an important concept. It relates to the North Star, relates to the revolution and the spinning, everything's spinning, everything's turning. And even when we look at chakra, spinning and turning, our thoughts spinning and turning. So in this spinning and turning, we can lose track. We can lose track of what's been happening and what's the line of time, because it's a spiraling line. It's not a straight line. We've been taught to think of time. So diaries become an amazingly powerful way to objectively observe the sublime. Your dreams, diarizing the dreams are very powerful because dreams slip away so fast. And when you put them in diary context, you are putting them down for objective analysis. The key is not to analyze. The key is not to get lost in trying to figure out your dreams. The key is to just diarize them. The act of diarizing and then letting it go increases one's memory. And the subconscious does the math. It's like dropping a penny into a well. The penny's there. The penny's in the well. It doesn't go anywhere. And when the well's empty, you can retrieve the penny. So there's something quite powerful in writing words down. We've done it since the dawn of time. And unfortunately, occult therapeutics tends to be written down in books. These were the diaries of the wizards, the mages and such, which is, I suppose, if you look at it, a different kind of a shaman. Though I don't believe that that's necessarily healthy, because such knowledge should be passed from word to mouth to ear. And the word begins in the heart, resonating through the throat, and moving through the ear, through the throat, to another's heart. For the heart is the true seat of knowledge. And this is what we forget when we read words. So the diarizing is about reactivating the heart, the powers of the heart. So what it should be for, from a perspective of deepening one's sense of self-awareness. And the diary can be a powerful tool. Let's say you get strange emotions, strange thoughts. Diarize them. Have a diary. You'll be shocked at the power that comes from a diary. It is the sacred weapon of the heart from a perspective of the occult therapeutics. And so when we allow our hearts to be totally open and we allow ourselves to experience the deeper aspects of our consciousness and of our being, it can become troubling at times. 
because the information flow can come hard and fast. And it can be overwhelming. And just writing these thoughts down and these feelings down and just letting go can be the most powerful form of therapy that there is. And I would recommend not to read your diary. Write it, but don't read it. You can come back and read it after a year or two years. That's my recommendation. So if you write it this year, read it next or the year after. That way, by the time you read it, you'll have transcended what it was that was the issue, but you'll be able to gain an insight into the nature of your consciousness, how it works, your mind, your habits, your patterns, who you are in this world will become revealed through the words you write and you'll gain insights. And those insights might be overwhelming if you read them immediately. So it's not about writing to read, it's about writing for the sake of writing. And when one starts to write for the sake of writing, one is embracing the true power of the diary. The same for dreams. Let's say you're having nightmares or dreams that are troubling you, causing you pain, causing you stress, causing you to suffer in some manner. Just by writing these dreams down, one can gain a sense of control over these emotions. One can put it into a context where one is no longer just the passive viewer, but one is now taking charge of these thoughts, these experiences and these emotions, and putting them down. One can influence the dreams one has in the future by what one writes in the diary today. So there's a lot of power in diarizing. And so this is why diaries have always been quite a, an important part of any mystic's toolkit in learning to understand the nature of the heart, the mind, the thoughts, and how these correlate together and how they fit into the cosmic scheme of being, manifesting and creating this reality through the experiences of our consciousness, which is basically a string of thought bound through emotion into a state of reaction, action, which causes us to want to plan the futures. And so we don't realize how much of our time we spend thinking nonsense. And when we start to write down in the diary thoughts that travel through your mind, you start to observe that you, you spend so much time wasting your thoughts on such arbitrary nonsense that it starts to become an issue. You start to observe, well, why am I doing this? It actually helps you to reach into the heart of Zen believe it or not. Those of you that are practicing meditation and want to break through to the next level, a diary might be exactly what you need. It's a funny thought, isn't it? So it's important to be aware of how powerful words are and how powerful the words shape our consciousness. And all magicians understand this, the power of meaning, and the power of resonance come together. From a Vedic concept, we're talking about the Yantra Mantra Tantra experience. This is the Trigam, which is related to the powers of Ganesh. And so, we basically create this paradigm of reality in this way, through our thoughts, words, actions. And this becomes the conduit of being. So all of our actions start with words, whether spoken, they might be spoken internally in the inner ear. We might be hearing them as thoughts. And this comes with the beginning of an impulse of an emotional state related to these words and these thoughts that drive these, these little hamster wheels of thoughts round and round in our heads. So bear this in mind. If you want to take charge of who you are, if you want to become a better person, you can't do that by forcing yourself to be what you think you want to be. You need to look at the grassroots. You need to observe the fundamental structures of your being. And so the emotions become the key. And emotions are such an abstract thing, difficult to work with. So when you're working with your emotions, just allow words to flow. Don't choose what you write. Just write what your impulse tells you to write. You might find yourself writing poetry. The poetry of being might come sp spraying through your thoughts and leave your world colored beautiful with the artistry of being being expressed on every page with every word. Like this, share this if you think this is good content, if you think others will benefit and if you enjoy it.
And don't forget that your diary is probably one of the most important things, one of the most important tools that you have towards finding a state of equilibrium, balance and harmony. And realize that it gives you the choice to be able to take charge of your thoughts and your life with a simple pen. And there's a secret here with Ganesha being the scribe, breaking off the tusk. There's a mystical revelation in the story. I've mentioned it before in my story of Ganesha. Though the diary is the tool that Ganesha uses. So understand if you want to be close to that creative impulse within yourself, a diary can help to liberate this part of yourself. It's simple, it's easy, and a child can do it. This is the Bush Whisperer coming at you. Subscribe not to miss my daily shares. And have an absolutely great day. Om Shanti.